A Steam Zero Day was found. Hackers at DEF CON show us that literally everything is vulnerable. They even hacked a Canon camera and passwordless logins are coming to Google. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morrison. This is ThreatWire for August 14, 2019. I kind of lost my voice. This is your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. It's time for a quick shout out, and this one goes out to Ed, Matt Will Go, Nathan, Nicholas, Michael, Jeffrey, Devin, Jonathan, Dave, Lazy Jones, Colt Huarka Hirsi, Joshua, Matt, Eiler, James, Elaine, Ronald, Dave, Alan, Mark, Bess, Craig, Michael, Mystic Knight, Ronald, Tony, Greg, Adam, and Ben, who joined the Patreon team this week. If you are interested in supporting ThreatWire on Patreon, hit up patreon.com slash ThreatWire. And a huge thank you to everyone who said hello at DEF CON, which was this weekend. As I mentioned before, I pretty much lost my voice, but hopefully it's not that noticeable. I had such a blast, and if you want to share any photos that you took with me, feel free to send them over to me on Twitter or on Patreon. I would love to see them. And now, on to the news. Props to Justin and Dan188 for sending me this story. If you run the Steam gaming client on a Windows computer, you may be vulnerable to a privilege escalation attack. Steam has over 100 million active users and 1 billion registered with an account. So a researcher disclosed this vulnerability to Steam's parent company, which is called Valve, but later disclosed it publicly after Valve called it not applicable. Huh? The researcher submitted the report via Valve's bug bounty program on June 15th, but they were denied on June 16th. They reopened the report after the researcher disputed Valve's reasoning, but it was closed again on July 20th with a note saying that it was not applicable because the vulnerability required physical access to the device. The researcher was not paid by Valve for their finding. 45 days after disclosure, he posted the findings publicly, at which point Steam updated the fix, which was a privilege escalation exploit. The researcher claimed that this could also be bypassed. Now, the vulnerability is a zero day that allows an attacker who has limited permissions to run a program as an administrator. Steam could allow an attacker to use symbolic links to launch or execute services with full privileges. The platform can be stopped by any user on a machine, and when doing so, gains access to subkeys under the main registration key. The subkeys are hidden in a folder that has full admin control, so the subkeys also inherit that privilege. He used a symbolic link to point at keys with full permissions and was able to restart the service, keeping that full read and write access. The researcher used this data to run the Windows installer with administrative privilege, which then allowed him to run and install code for anything you wanted. Another researcher released a proof of concept on GitHub. HackerOne reopened the bug report after it was originally closed to investigate it further. Valve has not responded to any journalists about the vulnerability, nor if the bypass mentioned would also be fixed. No technical details on a bypass are available at this time, so keep an eye on my Twitter and Patreon pages for updates. I've got some news from DEF CON. If you want to hear all about all of the news from the convention, check out my security bulletin, which is over on Patreon. For some reason, I never considered the security of a DSLR camera could be the downfall to malware. Checkpoint researcher Eyal Itkin found a vulnerability in Canon camera firmware that would allow him to exploit the device over USB or Wi-Fi, take over the camera, and even put ransomware on it. This means an attacker with the right tools could potentially hold private photos for ransom until you pay up. The problem persists in the Picture Transfer Protocol, which is PTP firmware, which allows you to transfer photos via USB or Wi-Fi. PTP also allows you to update your camera remotely, but does not require authentication and uses no encryption. In Canon's case, it can publish malware to the camera when it was connected to a computer, but was also able to do the same thing using a rogue Wi-Fi access point. To take it a step further, he also found the AES symmetric encryption keys for the firmware, and he was able to create a fake update that was actually his own malicious firmware with ransomware included. Canon released a security bulletin showing that the attack works on multiple different models, including Canon EOS DSLRs and PowerShot point-and-shoots. CVEs were created for all of these vulnerabilities. Now, according to Canon, this has not been exploited in the wild. Canon did not issue a fix 
specifics yet, but for the ADD. And they also state that they will do so for a specific number of models included. Canon recommended downloading firmware from their site, a trusted source, disable network functionality, don't connect the camera to any device that has been exposed to viruses, and don't use them on potentially hostile networks like free Wi-Fi environments. Before we hit story number three, I wanted to say thank you so much to my Patreon supporters. Those personalized thank you videos are going out this week to everyone who pledged during the special offer. Also, I decided I wanted to start a security and privacy audio podcast as part of the ThreatWire feed. So that's my next Patreon goal. So if you want to help, check out my Patreon community. The link is in the description below. And also a huge thank to our Hush Puppy Perk Level patrons for sending in their fur baby photos. And also thank you so much to everybody who came and said hello at DEF CON and showed me pictures of their fur babies. I love them. Keep them coming. They're adorable. Google has rolled out some new security features for Chrome on Android. Now, if you use this browser on your phone, you could eventually sign into your Google accounts with your fingerprint instead of a password, allowing for more security while also saving time. Local user verification, that's what it's called, can allow you to log into native applications and web services via your fingerprint, but you can also use a pin, pattern, or a separate password. Google is calling this feature Verify It's You. That's so easy and obvious. And it uses FIDO2, which is available on Android devices built in. This security key on Android was made available on Android 7.0 Nougat or later. Now, FIDO2 works alongside W3C Web Auth, which is Web Authentication API, and FIDO Client to Authenticator Protocol, which is CTAP. Both of these allow for secure authentication with web-based logins. Now, since courts have often ruled that investigators can confiscate a fingerprint to unlock a device, but cannot rule that way over passwords, since that would be considered testifying against oneself, using the pin, pattern, or password may work better for some folks. Now, Google never has access to your fingerprint as the authentication happens locally. What they do have is cryptographic proof that you did authenticate. Now, while this is only available on passwords.google.com, Google will be adding it to Google Cloud services in the future. The feature is already available on Pixel phones with other Android 7.0 Nougat and higher devices receiving the update in a few days. You cannot use the feature on the Google Password site if sync sharing among various Chrome browsers is enabled though. Now in order to try it, make sure your phone is running Nougat or higher, your Google account is activated, and a valid screen lock is turned on. Open Chrome on the phone, navigate to passwords.google.com, choose or manage passwords, and follow the instructions that pop up on your computer. You should continue to use 2FA as possible alongside that. And with that, do not forget to like and subscribe. I am Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet.